Money FM 89.3. I'm Rachel Kelly. Now, he's been referred to as the Indiana Jones of emerging markets and has spent over 40 years working and traveling throughout emerging and frontier markets. I'm, of course, referring to Mark Mobius, partner at Mobius Capital Partners. And who else to talk us talk to us about navigating emerging markets and what's changing as a result of COVID-19. Mark, you, thank you so much for joining us again today. It's a pleasure to catch up with you. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. So first, I've got to ask you, you know, some people have said that, you know, the years old trade of piling into emerging markets to capture high returns may have lost its luster as a result of the pandemic. Do you think that's the case? Uh, no, not really. In fact, the pandemic has given uh, new life to these emerging markets. Uh, there are a number of reasons for that. First of all, uh, we have a situation where the U.S. market has done very well, uh, except until recently where the last few days we've seen a big downturn. Mm -hmm. But otherwise, uh, the U.S. market has been on a terrific bull run, which means that a lot of people have made money that they want to diversify into other parts of the world. So uh, that money is flowing into uh, the emerging markets world. The other thing is that as a result of this pandemic mm -hmm. and the money that's being uh, uh, put into these emerging markets to help them uh, recover from the pandemic, uh, you're seeing also uh, good performance in these emerging markets. And finally, you must remember with interest rates at such a low point, uh, people want to buy equities and they can't find uh, much uh, money in putting into bank deposits or into even to bonds unless they want to take risk. So equities become very attractive. So the emerging market equities uh, look very, very interesting now. So the million dollar question then, Mark, which emerging markets are you looking at and why? Well, if you look at our portfolio, we have two funds, the uh, Mobius Investment Trust in the UK and the Mobius in Emerging Markets Fund in the Luxembourg CCAP area. Um, you'll see that in the portfolios, India is at the top, uh, followed by China, mm -hmm. uh, then Brazil. And then we have investments uh, in Korea, Taiwan, uh, Turkey, South Africa, Kenya. Um, and uh, that's more or less the breakdown in terms of countries concerned. Uh, but I think the most interesting thing is that uh, in addition to the fact we're very, very different from the index, uh, the Emerging Markets Index, uh, in country allocation, but also in sector allocation. Mm. Our biggest allocation uh, is in, of course, technology, but in a different way, not the internet companies, but the uh, semiconductor, the fabulous companies that do all the software and design for the integrated circuits, that sort of thing. Uh, then we're in consumables in various countries, and in some infrastructure equipment, uh, companies like pipes and cables and that sort of thing. Um, so it's pretty varied portfolio, but the emphasis very much is on uh, technology, I would say, because even in the case of the uh, consumer companies, we have education companies also, medical companies, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, we don't invest unless we see that each company has a specific strategy for uh, integrating technology and the internet into their business. And that was just going to ask you as well what your take on tech was, given the sell-off that we've seen this week. So which sectors are you avoiding then, Mark, at the moment? You've mentioned you're looking at companies with an internet strategy. So by default, then, those that don't have maybe on your no-go list, what else are you perhaps uh, avoiding? Uh, yeah, generally speaking, we're avoiding uh, mining uh, because of the environmental uh, mm. issues and challenges that they are facing. Uh, we're avoiding banks, uh, obviously, because the bad loan portfolios are growing at a pretty good pace. And no one really knows how big that hole is. So we're avoiding uh, that area. Um, and uh, I would say those are the main areas that we're avoiding at this stage of the game. How has your strategy changed, though, as a result of COVID-19? As a result of COVID-19, of course, we've uh, changed the strategy towards uh, 
more technology in the sense of mm-hmm. companies that are able to use technology in their business because we realize now that remote uh, control, remote conferencing, uh, remote uh, all kinds of communication is very, very important. And that means technology at the end of the day. So that's one big change. The other change is that we're finding the uh, per capita incomes in these countries is growing, and therefore we can move up market in many areas. A good example is in the cell phone market, you're finding smartphones, which were in the past beyond the reach of many, many consumers in emerging markets now are able to afford these smartphones. So that's another big change. Okay, and you've you've spoken about your outlook for emerging markets and some of the emerging markets that you're looking at. But Mark, tell us, what about the frontier markets? Where are there hidden gems that you're looking at? Uh, Well, we're finding a hidden gem in in Kenya, as I mentioned. In Mm -hmm. Vietnam is another frontier market where we're finding opportunities. And uh, if you look at Africa, you'll find that many, many companies are quite interesting Uh, We haven't invested extensively there because we're finding so many bargains in other parts of the world, but uh, definitely Frontier is within the range of what we're doing, and we're looking at these companies very carefully. I see. So can you tell us then, Mark, uh, what's your favorite theme at the moment? You've spoken about tech, but beyond tech, you've mentioned briefly that you're avoiding mining because of um, the impact on the environment. Is that another major theme for you? Climate change, is that something that you're increasingly looking at? Well, our major theme is not necessarily climate change, but governance, Mm. Uh, ESG, environmental, social, and governance. The G is important to us and we are emphasizing the governance aspect because if you have good governance then you can tackle some of the environmental and social issues so we only invest in companies that are willing to improve their governance or who already have good governance and that covers the multitudes of things such as uh, having independent board members having Mm -hmm. women on the board um uh, having a compensation system which incentivize, uh, incentivizes workers and so forth. So uh, there are many aspects to governance, but we feel that is the most important thing. And uh, we're finding also that companies with good governance tend to perform better. So in our book, Invest for Good, we outline how we do this and some examples of what we've been done has been done in the uh, governance area. So, Mark, I've got to ask you as well, um, beyond that, looking at where the markets have been trending, the markets have been very reactive um, to news of possible vaccines on a daily basis. We see them flittering in and out of the red. Um, but what what are the major moves that you're looking at at the moment? Obviously, we've got the U.S. elections just around the corner. What, do you, what, do you, what What's your take on them? Um, how do you expect the markets to react well, as you know, the market has already reacted very favorably mm-hmm. because after the big downturn at the beginning of this year, ending around March, uh, we've seen an incredible resurgence in equity markets around the world. Uh, the U.S. is up substantially. Well, you name every single market is up with a few exceptions, but mostly are up substantially. And what that tells us is that uh, the market, the equity market as the leading indicator is telling us that the economies are going to do very well next year. So we expect a V-shaped recovery uh, at the end of this year and the beginning of next year. Now, a lot of people are talking about a second wave, uh, all of this sort of thing, but I don't think people will tolerate any more of the lockdowns. We're seeing already a tremendous resistance to lockdowns and I believe Governments around the world have made uh, major policy mistakes by locking down their economies because this has created more distress and could be, once the numbers are in, more deaths than COVID itself. So this is something that has to be evaluated very carefully. But I believe that uh, uh, this will end uh, by the end of this year and we'll see a resurgence uh, in the economies. So Mark, I've got to ask you then, 
What's one piece of advice that you'd give to investors, perhaps, that are just starting out on their investment journey, or one piece of advice that you've found to hold true to help you weather storms? Uh, first of all, uh, don't be afraid to invest. I mean, uh, we always tell people the best time to invest is when you have money. Now, when we say invest, that means investigate. In other words, don't just throw your money at some rumor or what your friends tell you to buy. Uh, mm -hmm. Really study where you're going and what your objectives are and invest for the long term. Don't think of the short term. Uh, do systematic investing. And if you're going to be investing in companies, uh, look at the people behind the company. Are they diligent, honest, transparent people? Uh, if they are, then it's probably a good idea to look at that company and look at the numbers. Of course, you've got to uh, have companies with good numbers. But I think uh, people often forget that uh, the management of companies is extremely important. Mm. And you've got to bet your money on good management. So lastly, Mark, I've got to ask you, I hear that you're going to be launching a book relatively soon. Can you tell us what it's about? Uh, yes, uh, I'm launching a book about inflation, and it's called The Inflation Myth uh, and the Wonderful World of Deflation. Uh, and in the book, I outline why I believe that uh, the emphasis on inflation numbers mm. is faulty, uh, because the inflation numbers are inaccurate and do not give a good reflection of what is happening in the economies. In addition, uh, inflation is not very meaningful. The, you see the incomes of people going up in line with inflation. I show that in the book. But finally, I say that because of technology advances, we're seeing a deflationary environment where prices of goods and services are not going up, but are going down. So uh, that is really the premise of the book. And I hope people will read it and give me their feedback. And this is out next month, isn't it, Mark? We can get our hands on it from October? Hopefully from the end of October, yes. Wonderful. Well, Mark, thank you so much for taking the time to have a chat with us. It's been absolutely wonderful speaking with you. Thank you very much. Nice seeing you. We've been speaking with Mark Mobius, a partner at Mobius Capital Partners here on Primetime on Money FM 89.3.